Hey, what's up and how you doing? This is Dan from Cheap Living. And today I have a cooking video for you. It is all about stuffed peppers. Now, lately I've been kind of inspired by Indian cuisine and some Asian cuisine. So, I'm going to do some uh, something I've never done before. I hope it tastes good. I'm going to do chicken curry stuffed peppers. Let's get started. All right. So what we have here is diced peppers, diced potatoes, and diced onions, and some diced green onions. If you remember that I got from my last food run. So that's what's in here. Then we have some diced tomatoes. We have a combination of some feta cheese and Parmesan cheese. Now, this is chicken breast that I got from one of the other food runs that I went on. So, I squeezed some lime juice and lemon juice in there. And then we put in some ground lemongrass. We put in some ground ginger. We put in some yellow curry powder that you can get at the Dollar Tree and or at Walmart. We put in some kosher salt. We put in my herb blend. I've discussed what's in that in a, a previous video. And we put in some cumin. So what I did is, is I, uh, I put it in here and I gave it a nice coating and a nice mix. Make sure those seasonings are all over the place. You know what? I think I'm going to add a little bit more. I don't think there's enough. So here goes some... Uh, some ground lemongrass. A little bit more uh, ground ginger. Put some of my herb blend in there. A little bit of kosher salt. Some more yellow curry. God, it's so fragrant. It's fragrant. It smells so good so far. All right, add some cumin. Give that a really good mix. I'm going to add some straight olive oil to it. Just a touch. Not too much and not too little. I have my... Uh, pan with oil preheated on about a six and a half and the first thing we want to do is we want to brown the outside of this chicken breast. I think this chicken curry is going to come out freaking awesome especially the stuffed pepper. I just think it's going to be so good. It already smells so good. Alright so I'm going to brown these uh, pieces of chicken off on the outside and uh, we will be back. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we're going to take the onions, peppers, and potatoes, and we're going to put them right into that pot. And then we're going to set aside this beautiful golden brown chicken that's been done in the seasons, and we're going to pop it in the freezer to cool it off. Because what we're going to do is, is we're going to cube it up and put it in the curry. But you want the chicken breast to be nice and stiff. This way, when you cut into it, it doesn't use all that seasoning. But look how beautiful those veggies are. I'm going to saute these down so they're semi translucent. And uh, we'll be back as soon as that's done. The next step is that I'm going to do is I'm going to add some pressed garlic. Alright, so uh, now that the peppers the onions and the potatoes with the fresh garlic in there is all nice and cooked down. I mean, look at that. We are going to add the chicken. Now, the chicken was not cooked all the way through. I just wanted to brown it up a little bit just so that uh, the seasoning sticks to the chicken very, very well before I cut it. And then we're going to put it in this pot. We're going to give that a little stir. And then the next thing we are going to add 
Now this stuff is super, super hot and super spicy. This you can find in any Oriental market. It is red curry paste. Now they make two, they make three different kinds. They mild, medium, and hot. I accidentally bought the super hot. I usually buy the medium, which is hot enough for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add about, I say that's about a tablespoon of curry paste, red curry paste, and then I'm going to add a little bit of the tagine. This stuff is awesome. I love this stuff, and I think it's going to fit very, very well with these stuffed peppers. I'm going to put a good amount in there. Not too much, not too little. Then we're going to cook that just a little bit, and then we're going to add our diced tomatoes. Alright, so we cooked it down a little bit, and now I'm going to add the diced tomatoes and give that a mix. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to put a lid on this, just like it is. And we're going to let this simmer and cook for probably about, I would say, about 25 minutes. I will be back. Okay, so now that the um, the curry chicken has been sitting, I've added a little bit of chili powder now that I had a little broth and liquid in it. Now, I'm going to let this cook down. Look at that. Mmm, it smells so good. I'm going to add a little chili powder. I think that's the missing ingredient. It tastes so good though. And uh, I will show you the final process of stuffing the peppers as soon as this liquid cooks down a little bit. Alright, so as you can see, the liquid has cooked down tremendously. And now we're left with a very nice, uh, thick mix here. It is so tasty and so fragrant. It smells so good. I cannot wait to eat this as a stuffed pepper. It's going to be so delicious. And the uh, feta cheese and the uh, Parmesan cheese are very, very neutral. They are slightly salty. And if you've noticed, I have not added any salt to this really at all. Except for a little tiny bit. And I think that's going to balance out very well. Uh, Indians eat a lot of uh, yogurt and uh, sour cream or creme, creme de fraiche with their food to mellow out the balance between the heat and the creaminess. And I think the cheese is going to work out very, very well in the stuffed pepper. So we're going to let this cool. We're going to put it in a Tupperware and put it in the refrigerator. And then we are going to mix the cheese with it and make us some stuffed peppers. So I will show you the final process of these awesome stuffed peppers. They're going to be so good. Alright, so after the uh, mix has been cooling down for a little while, I had a little bowl of uh, the curry and just some straight uh, jasmine rice. And it was super duper delicious. So I have decided not to add the cheese to it. I have a better idea for the cheese. So uh, now we're going to take a look at these beautiful stuffed peppers. So here we go. I mean, uh, I actually only had enough for five. I guess the, uh, the bowl that I had was uh, one of the peppers. So um, I reduced it down to five. And these are going to go in my toaster oven. Unfortunately... Um, a little hot in my apartment because I'm having issues with my air conditioner. I really hate having a slumlord. But uh, I'm going to take you through a little process here that I like to do. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of olive oil. This is actually olive oil and canola mix here on the side of the pan. And I'm going to grab my brush. Alright. So I'm going to take my my brush here, you get these at the Dollar Tree for a dollar. And I'm going to brush some of this oil on the sides of the 
the peppers here. Make a little bit more in there. The reason why I'm doing this is because we want the uh, outside of the, the pepper to char and brown up a little bit, and the bottom as well. And when it bakes in the oven, the heat from the oven is going to help with that. So you want to give it a decent coating, not too much, not too little. So there you go, you got some oil on the outside of these peppers. And they are going to go straight into the toaster oven. Cooking them in the toaster oven at 350 degrees, probably for about 45 minutes. Anyway, now it's time to make some super delicious polenta. Here we go. Alright, so I'm going to make some polenta cakes. So the first thing we have to do is make the polenta. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to add, like I said, I go to the Dollar Tree to buy this. This is a Kendall Farm chicken broth with uh, no MSG and or gluten free. And this stuff is awesome for $1.25. And I'm pretty much almost going to use the whole entire thing. So now what we're going to do is, now we're going to wait for that to come to a simmer. And then we're going to add our cornmeal. Alright, so inside the stock, the chicken stock, we put a little bit of sesame oil. We put a little bit of salt and pepper. And we put some of this Kender's Garlic and Herb. It is super delicious and goes great in a lot of different combinations. And in the kitchen, this thing, again, seafood, fish, steak, just about anything. This stuff is awesome. I love Kender's products. They are so good. All right. So, I'm going to set the phone trusty Motorola G6. Really hoping that you guys can uh, can see what I'm doing here. Alright, so what we have here is some cornmeal. Uh, basic cornmeal. This is uh, just how it happens to be Quaker. And uh, you want to have the proper tools for this. The first tool you need is a really good spring whisk. Nice and soft. It springs. That's why it's called a spring whisk. These things are awesome. And uh, you also need a plastic spatula, preferably one resistant to heat. Alright, so this is at a slight simmer. And then what you want to do is, you want to constantly stir and add your cornmeal slowly. The reason why you add your cornmeal slowly is because it might thicken up on you really, really quick. So you got to keep your eye on it. I like to use a whisk. And I'll show you what the spatula is for. Now you want to have a nice, gooey, kind of like I would say, Mudman from Batman would be a good, good way to put it. <laughs> yes, I am a giant nerd. So, uh, like I said, you just want to add a little bit at a time, and uh, you want to stick to the spatula when you stir it. So. This is going to be a, uh, keep on going, it's getting to be that consistency that I really, really like. And you don't want it to burn, so make sure your burner is not up too high. I have my burner on a 7, which gives it plenty of heat. It takes a little bit of time to come up to temperature, but I can promise you the polenta is definitely cooking very, very nicely with my stove top being on a 7 and constantly stirring it. So as you can see, let's see, let's take a look at that. It is starting to become a lot thicker. I'm going to keep going. A little bit more. Alright, now it's not exactly thick enough. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit to about a three, okay? Take it off the heat, and as you can see, it's starting to get really nice and thick. 
take it off the heat for a second, and then I'm going to add a nice spoonful of my herb butter that I make. This is the herb butter that I make. I'll show you that in another video. I'm going to give it a nice amount of that so it has a nice silky buttery texture. Alright. Then we're going to throw it back on the burner. Now remember, the burner is still hot from being on the 7, but it is cooling down because I put it on a 3. I'm going to put it back up to about a 4.5. And, and I'm just going to keep on stirring this. And I'm going to add a little bit more. to cook on the burner a little bit oh, it's starting to stiffen up really nice definitely starting to stiffen up really nice almost the consistency that I want look at that I'm just keep on stirring it might just I might not have to add any more cornmeal I think we're good I think that we are good off the heat for a minute. Let's see what it looks like consistency on the rubber spatula. Well, I could probably go a little thicker. But look at that. I love polenta. Polenta is so good and it's so easy to make. I'm going to go a little bit of thicker here on the burner. Just keep stirring it. I think we're quite there. Alright, so in this pan here I have a piece of wax paper <coughs> and I put some oil on it. This is a uh, olive oil and canola oil mixed. Now what I'm going to do is taking this off the heat, grabbing my past plastic spatula and I am going to put this right in there. This is going to be so good. And then this is going to go in the refrigerator and it is going to cool off. And you have to cool it off completely. So it may take a little bit of time. But polenta is so easy to make. Just make room in your, uh, your refrigerator for this to cool off. I usually put it on the bottom shelf with a towel underneath it. So then what you want to do is, I mean, look at that beautiful polenta. You know what? I want to give this a taste. Because I think it's going to be super awesome. Let me uh, smooth out the top. So you definitely want to smooth out the top. Kind of like icing on a cake. So just use your plastic. Don't worry about that oil. Don't worry about the oil. You want that oil. Trust me. Otherwise it's going to stick to the pan when it cools off. You do not want it to stick to the pan when it cools off. And I will show you the reason why. Alright. Look at that. That looks. That's so bad. Alright. So let me get a spoon here. Let's taste this polenta. Look at that nice, hot, steamy polenta. Mmm. Oh my god. Oh yeah. So good. So, so good. Alright. Let's put this in the refrigerator. Let it cool off, and I'll show you what to do next. You know what? I forgot to show you the final step on these super delicious uh, polenta cakes. The most important part. Shame on me. Anyway, let me show you guys this real quick. So, as you can see, you know, this beautiful polenta. It's only been in the uh, refrigerator for about five minutes, not even. And uh, it's already starting to stiffen up. So, what I would like to do is, I totally forgot to do, is we have these beautiful 
sliced cherry tomatoes that we are going to put on top. Beautiful, awesome, so good. Push them down in there a little bit. Don't be afraid. Give them a little push. And then, after we push a couple of these in here, like that, throw a couple more. Look at that, that looks so good, oh my gosh. I mean, eating this polenta just like this as a side would be so tremendously delicious. All right, so after you do that, remember, this is a Parmesan and feta cheese combination. A little bit of each that I had left over, and I knew I was going to be doing this video for you guys, so I saved it. And what you want to do is, is you want to sprinkle it over the top. Break that feta cheese up a little bit more and do this with my hands. All right, kind of like a pizza, all right? So you want to make sure you get a nice, nice cut. Now, I have my oven preheated at uh, 350 degrees right now. My big oven, I had to turn it on. I had no choice. And I had to put uh, the polenta in this uh, beautiful, awesome saute pan that I got for $3 at uh, Goodwill, which is like a... $120 pan. Like I said, cheap living. You can find great bargains at Goodwill and Salvation Army if you know what you're looking for. Alright, so uh, look at that. That looks fucking excuse my French, but that looks super awesome. Wow. And uh, this is going to go in the oven at 350 degrees. I might even turn it up to 400. And uh, you want the top to brown off a little bit. So let me pop this baby in the oven. Alright, so I did wind up putting the uh, oven on broil low just to brown the top of this a little bit. But I want you to check out this polenta. Look at that. That looks so, so delicious and it smells so good. I cannot wait to eat this. This is going to be super awesome. Now we want the polenta to sit and cool just a little bit. We need it to firm up a little bit more. And then I will show you the finished super awesomeness of this chicken curry stuffed pepper with tomato and herb polenta. All right, so here are the stuffed peppers. I just took them out of the toaster oven. And that is exactly what you're looking for. They look so delicious, don't they? Wait until you see the food porn on how this whole entire dish is put together when it's finished. All right, so are you guys ready to take a look at this food porn? I know I am. Anyway, this is the uh, chicken curry stuffed pepper pol tomato polenta. Let's check this out. Look how beautiful that is. Look at that polenta cake. That looks absolutely amazing, doesn't it? I can't wait to eat it. I don't know about you, but that looks absolutely delicious. In closing, I would like to say, can't wait to dig into this. And uh, really hope you enjoy the content, enjoy the video. Send me a like, subscribe to my channel. Remember, always have the proper herbs, proper spices, and proper cooking techniques. You can't go wrong in your kitchen. Look at mine. It's tiny. You guys have a good one. I'm sorry, but I just have to say that uh, that was one of the most delicious meals I've had in a very, very long time. I'm not trying to boast. I'm not trying to say that I'm a badass chef. But that was motherfucking good. Let me tell you. I highly, highly advise you folks at home to try that recipe. Absolutely delicious.